The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Who are you? What are you? How do you think about yourself? There was a young grade school boy back in my home state of Kansas who was assigned once to write an essay on human anatomy. And here's what he wrote. He said, your head is kind of round and hard. Your brains are in it. Your hair is on it. Your face is in the front of your head where you eat and make faces. Your neck is what keeps your head out of your collar. Your stomach is something that if you don't eat often enough, it hurts. Your shoulders are kind of shelves, he wrote. Your spine is a long bone in your back that keeps you from folding up. And your back is always behind you no matter how quickly you turn around. Your arms you've got to have to pitch with and also so you can reach the butter. Your legs are what if you have not got two of them, you can't get to first base. Your feet are what you run on. Your toes are what get stubbed. And that's all there is of you except what's inside and I never saw it. The end, he wrote. But that is not the end of the essay. For you are more than that. You are more than merely a physical being. You are a living soul as well. Through the decades, one of the most profoundly thought evocative statements which I have ever read has been this one by the ancient Greek philosopher Socrates. The unexamined life is not worth living. Have you dared to take the time to examine your life, to ask what is the reason for it all? What meaning is there to your human existence? Are you but a senseless cipher, a poem without rhyme and reason? Why are you here? Just to eat, sleep, and renew your driver's license? Just to pay taxes, social security, and bridge tolls? Just to occupy time and space until another generation arrives? Just to be one more face in your high school group graduation picture in the yearbook? Are you just here to prevent a blank space in your class photo, an empty line on the name roster? Did you feel like just one more bull in a herd of cattle, one more sheep in a forgotten flock, an only orphan in the human family, a lost child at the county fair, the last clown in the parade, the extra extra in a crowd scene scheduled to be cut from the movie and left on the editing room floor and swept out with the crushed paper coffee cups and broken plastic spoons? Do you feel like the listless litter left in the bleachers after the game, as lonesome as a lone hot dog wrapper blowing across the end zone of a dark football stadium at four in the morning after the crowd has gone home and the lights are turned off and the teams have left the locker rooms? How do you describe the lost and lonesome loneliness of the hurting human heart, the abandoned ache of the hated, the wretched rejected of this earth, the pain of the poor, the unpopular, the subjects of superior scorn and sarcasm. Who counts the tears of the people who don't count? The sobs of the children of the sidewalks and the streets. Who counts the cries of the cut and bleeding? God does. God knows every tear, every groan from the gutter, every desperate cry for help from the bottom of the biological barrel. God knows it all. God cares. And God loves you right here and now, where you are and as you are this very moment. Years ago, there was a campus beauty queen at the University of California in Berkeley who was fatally injured in an automobile accident. These were the dying girl's last words to her mother in the hospital. These words, Mother, you taught me everything I needed to know in college. You taught me how to light my cigarette, how to hold my cocktail glass. But, Mother, you never taught me how to die, and you'd better teach me fast, because, Mother, I'm dying. How do you die? How do you deal with these great questions of life and death, of time and eternity. It is interesting to note that even Clarence Darrow, the famed agnostic lawyer, was troubled about his soul as he lay on his deathbed. He said, get me three clergymen. He told this to one of his law clerks. And when the ministers arrived, Darrow, who had laughed at the spiritual beliefs of William Jennings Bryan during the heated Scopes trial down in Tennessee, this same Clarence Darrow said, gentlemen, I have written and spoken a great many things against God during my lifetime. And now I wish I hadn't for I realize it is entirely possible that I may have been wrong, and so I should like to ask as a final favor that each one of you intercede for me on my behalf with the Almighty. These three men did kneel down and pray for Clarence Darrow on his deathbed, and soon thereafter he died. However young or old you may be this moment listening to this worldwide radio broadcast or listening by transcription, 
Resolve here and now this moment to make your peace with God for now and forever. Here and now, God loves you. God has a wonderful will for your life. God is the creator of it all, the architect of time and space. One of the very first astronauts, Richard F. Gordon, Jr., commented in a press interview. He said, of course, I didn't expect to see God when I was in space, but I have no doubt about God's existence for I was privileged to look down on some of the things which God created. I saw their magnificence and their beauty. His existence, God's existence, must be a reality. Dare to believe that you yourself are a son or daughter of this living God. God has created you for a reason, and the most real aspect the most real dimension of your life is the spiritual life, your inner life. What you really are in your heart and soul character is one thing you make in this world, but take with you to the next. Reputation is what you're supposed to be, but character is what you are. Your reputation may be earned in but an hour, but your character does not come to light for years to come. Reputation grows like a mushroom, character like a great oak. And the deepest root of great character is faith. It is faithful commitment to the will and wisdom of God, daring to give your life to the living God who gave you your life in the first place, no matter what may transpire, no matter what difficulties, what extremities, what perplexities, to trust your life to the living God who gave you your life. Man's extremity is God's opportunity, said Charles Spurgeon. When you come to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. Refuse to give up your hope, your vision, your high sense of spiritual purpose for the living of your life. The teaching of Jesus is more than a message to be heard. It is a deed to be done. It is not only to be received, it is to be lived to the very full. It is not only to be paraded, but to be performed. It is living in vital faith in the living God. Said Jesus, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And the love of God and the love of others, the two great commandments, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, this universal worldwide family of God in which you are a vital part. And God has a will for your life this very instant. It can transform you to begin to live in this vital faith. The person of doubt finds a difficulty in every opportunity, but a person of faith finds an opportunity in every difficulty. Have faith in God, said Jesus, and dare to persist vigorously, determinedly in that faith. Back during the years of the United States Civil War, there was a Union detachment under General Course stationed at Altoona Pass defending a large supply depot. But they were completely surrounded by a vastly superior Confederate army under General French. And when it began to appear that the situation was entirely hopeless, a Union officer happened to be looking up, and he saw a white signal flag waving from the summit of Kennesaw Mountain. The signal was promptly answered, and these discouraged Union soldiers received this heartening message. It said, Continue to hold the fort, for I am coming, and signed General Sherman. Thus encouraged by General Sherman's message, this besieged detachment successfully defended their position until Sherman's troops arrived there on the scene. There may be a thousand times or a thousand thousand times in your life when you have felt tempted to abandon God's will and purpose for you, God's call, God's claim upon your life, God's plan for your life, but continue to hold the fort. Hold fast to your faith in God, and don't quit. An unknown author years ago wrote this inspiring, this great poem, When things go wrong as they sometimes will, when the road you're trudging seems all uphill. When the funds are low and the debts are high and you want to smile but you have to sigh. When care is pressing you down a bit, rest if you must, but don't you quit. For life is queer with its twists and turns, as every one of us sometime learns, and many a fellow turns about when he might have won had he stuck it out. Don't give up. Though the pace seems slow, you may succeed with another blow. Often the goal is nearer than it seems to a faint and faltering man. Often the struggler has given up when he might have captured the victor's cup, and he learned too late when the night came down how close he was to the golden crown. Success is failure turned inside out, the silver tint of the clouds of doubt, and you never can tell how close you are. It may be near when it seems afar, so stick to the fight when your heart is hit. It's when things seem worst that you must not 
quit and said, Jesus of Nazareth, have faith in God. And in parable after parable, he taught persistence and perseverance in prayer. Seek and you will find. Knock and the door shall be opened. Ask and you shall receive. For nothing, absolutely nothing, is impossible with God. If you're intrigued by these subjects, about how you can have a spiritual renaissance in your life as an individual and how that can be part of a dawning spiritual renaissance on this planet, then write to us, write to the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. That's the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written Finding God, Getting to Know God, Growing Spiritually, Seven Principles of Prayer. How do you pray? What difference can it make in your life day by day, year by year? If you're interested in these things, just write to us. The Spiritual Renaissance Institute, and for those of you listening in other countries around the world over our international satellite and shortwave network, let me spell the mailing address, Post Office Box 3080, Oakhurst, O-A-K-H-U-R-S-T. California, C-A-L-I-F-O-R-N-I-A, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, may God's will be done by you. Good day.